Your streets are a little slippery from both Sunday's rain and or snow, but also a little patchy drizzle around the area this morning. It's 36 now. We're going to hang right there in the middle 30s through most of the morning. 40 at noon, staying cloudy and cool most of the day and 42 degrees about it, Kim. All right, well, here we go. We've got an accident on eastbound I-94. That is closed right now between Allard and 8 Mile. You can exit at Moross. Take that to Kelly to 8 Mile back to 94. Northbound I-75 also closed at Verner Highway uh, all the way to I-96. You can exit at Clark and use Michigan Avenue. And we've just picked up a new accident on eastbound I-96 just past the Davison. Your left lane is blocked. All right, thank you, Kim. The Michigan Ohio State football game. We still have a few more weeks before we get to that one, but hundreds flocked to the big house in an attempt to be a hero a few weeks early. The Wolverines and Buckeyes are competing to collect the most blood donations and bone marrow registrations ahead of the game. The event was the largest single day blood donation on the campus, and the winner will be announced at halftime on November 25th. Last year, Michigan won the blood battle. We're hoping they're going to win the game as well. Exactly. <laughs> it is 525, everybody. And new this morning, actor Kevin Spacey might be looking at criminal charges. And why a team of police dogs are being trained not to sip out certain drugs. But first, we've got the very latest on breaking news that we continue to follow this morning. A toddler survives this horrible crash that has left four people dead along the I-94 freeway. We'll have a live report from our Nick Minoselli, who's there on the scene right after the break. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news we're covering this morning is such a tragedy. The I-94 in St. Clair Shores and Harper Woods that right there on the border is closed because of a crash that has claimed the lives of four people all in one vehicle. Fortunately, here's what we know at this hour. A toddler somehow survived this accident. That toddler is in the hospital right now. But everyone else in that vehicle was killed. Link Monticelli joins us now live from the scene where at 5 o'clock the victims were still on the freeway. I know it takes some time in order to do the investigation on the scene. What's the latest now, Nick? So, Rhonda, those victims are still on the freeway right now. And a lot of this is because the MSP investigators have to be methodical and what they do here. They've got to calculate everything and take pictures and document every single aspect of this accident because four people have died in here. And as you mentioned, a fifth, a toddler is in the hospital also from this accident. So we are not going to be moving the camera or panning down to show you because there are still uh, people laying in the middle of I-94. We do have some video that we can show you though that was taken from other parts of this accident. See, this accident happened at about one o'clock this morning again in the eastbound lanes of I-94, basically right underneath of Eight Mile Road. And the best we can tell is that the SUV was alone in this, just a one vehicle, a single car accident. And witnesses believe that the SUV lost control, may have been going too fast. The roads obviously were slick and wet at one o'clock this morning. There wasn't much traffic, fortunately. Otherwise, there would be many more people injured in this. But as you mentioned, there were five people inside of this SUV. Four people have passed away. Two of them were ejected. They are the ones who are still in the uh, eastbound lanes of I-94, and there are still two people inside of the SUV. Now, right now, the Michigan State Police are here. The fire department is here. The coroner's office is here. And in fact, they are just picking up one of the bodies right now and uh, moving them to a different area. Uh, as we mentioned, there was one toddler who fortunately somehow survived this crash and that, as one witness, witness describes, is the silver lining, if you can call it that. One of the police officers mentioned it to us. Um, originally, somebody heard it on the radio that had said he had survived. So that was everybody's big concern. Did he make it? Didn't he make it? You know, at least one sort of positive out of the tragedy. And I guess that's really the only way to look at it. When four people have passed away, the only way to try to salvage some of this is that a toddler has been able to survive this crash. Now, the eastbound lanes, again, are closed all the way at Allard. Uh, they've got MDOT workers that have closed that um, se section of the highway, forcing people off the exit ramp there and then redirecting them all the way down around 8 Mile Road to get back on. They are working on one victim as we speak. There is another one they still need to work on. There's still two more inside of the SUV, so this still could be at least an hour or so until these lanes are reopened. Fortunately, rush hour isn't too affected by the eastbound lanes. More of it is westbound going downtown, but this still will cause some issues 
for the morning commute. We are live here on the border of St. Clair Shores and Harper Woods. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. You only wonder what the relationship is between the toddler and those four people who have passed away. Nick, while we still have you, and I know it's early in terms of getting updates from state police that are there investigating, but with that toddler surviving and some of the other people in the vehicle being ejected, do we know if they were wearing seat belts or not? You know, they don't know the answer to that just yet. Uh, they are going on the presumption that the two who were ejected were not wearing their seatbelts. Mm -hmm. And they say that basically because when you've got four people who were killed, two are still in the vehicle and two are not. They are assuming that they didn't have their seatbelts on, but that needs to be part of their investigation. Right. Such a tragedy. All right, Nick, thank you. It is 533 now, and Nick touched on this just a little bit, but we do want to get the official information from Kim DiGiulio, who's tracking this whole mess for us uh, along the freeway. Kim? All right, thank you, Evrod, and thank you for that report, Nick. Here is a look of what we're dealing with right now over on eastbound I-94. As you can see, that all lanes are closed right at Allard. This is the traffic that is being forced off onto Moras, so if you are traveling this way, you will exit on Moras, take that to Kelly. Kelly will take you to 8 Mile, and then you'll be able to get back onto eastbound on I-94 and get you where you need to be this morning. The bad news is, is that we have other closures out there that we're dealing with this morning as well. This is northbound I-75. This is also closed because uh, right at Verner uh, because of another accident. So in the meantime, if you do travel this way, you're going to want to exit at Clark and then you can use Michigan Avenue instead. And then that's not all. We do have another accident over on the eastbound lanes of I-96 just past the Davison here. The left lane is blocked still very early, so we're not seeing big backups in these areas, but as it gets uh, a little bit later in the morning, uh, those traffic volumes will start to build. So if you're if this is part of your morning commute, any of these three accidents, make sure you give yourself plenty of extra time this morning and be careful of those wet roads out there. Now, Brandon has a look at today's forecast. Yeah, Kim, that uh, 96 uh, area with the S curve and roads are a little bit slippery. Just be extra cautious. 36 degrees alive. Look here from Mount Clemens and streets are a little slippery here. Northwest winds at six, but currently really not seeing a lot of precipitation coming down by midnight. Most of it moving east. We're stuck with some low clouds producing a little bit of mist. So that drizzle drying out by eight, nine o'clock and for the day we expect more cloud cover through the lunch hour, early afternoon, some peaks of sun later in the day, but mid thirties at 8 a.m. to around 40 degrees at noon and a high of 42 on your Monday. It's lighter winds, but a little gloomy me looking anyway out there for a Monday. Wish we could be a little bit brighter. We do see some sunshine coming back at us a couple of uh, days in the seven day guys. We'll have more on that starting to warm us up a little coming up. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. It is 535 now and police are continuing to search for two missing 16 year olds. Lillian, Lillian Nguyen and Timothy Weber are believed to be traveling together. Nguyen was last seen at her home in Canton, while Timothy was last seen at his home in Plymouth. It's believed the pair might have used an ATM in Rossford, Ohio, just outside of Toledo around 11 last night. Police say they might be tra traveling in a gray 2017 Jeep Wrangler. And if you know where they could be or if you recognize them, please give police a call. Two people are recovering this morning after a fire ripped right through their Farmington Hills home. This fire started Sunday morning on Quaker Valley Lane near Farmington Road on I-696. The victims were overcome by smoke and had to be taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation treatment. Thankfully, both are expected to be okay. The cause of that fire is still under investigation, but the house has been deemed a total loss and investigators believe their efforts were hindered by the distance between the home and a fire hydrant. The First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas has reopened. And the building has since been transformed. There you see a picture from inside. The church held services one week after Devin Kelly opened fire, taking the lives of 26 people. The service was held in a tent a few blocks from the church building, which has been transformed into a memorial. The inside of the church has been painted white, and there are 26 empty chairs, each with a single red row showing where each of the victims were found. Worshippers who were moved by the tragedy say that they will focus on their faith. There's a greater God that we serve. Uh, we lean on him. We don't lean on our own understanding as the Bible teaches us um, that something good will come out of this. 
Earlier, the church pastor, Frank Pomeroy, stated that the church would be torn down and another would be built on a neighboring area of the property. Today, the associate pastor says that church members will decide on what to do in the coming weeks with that property. It is 537, everybody, and there were some scary moments for Carrie Underwood over the weekend. Just ahead, we'll tell you why the country music star was rushed to the hospital. Plus this. You don't want to let yourself believe that, you know, I am, I am, I am a victim of, of sexual abuse. Like, it's really not an easy thing to let yourself believe that. That is U.S. Olympic star Allie Raisman, and she's admitting that she was, too, treated and allegedly sexually abused by Dr. Larry Nasser. Her full story at 6. And next at 5, the drug that crime-finding dogs are being trained not to sniff out. We're back in a minute. The veterans. Welcome back, everyone. It is 541. And according to reports, a Massachusetts district attorney plans to meet with a teen who accused actor Kevin Spacey of committing sexual assault at a Nantucket restaurant last year. The alleged assault involves the 19 year old son of a former Boston news anchor. And according to the teen's mother, that former Boston news anchor and her son were was working as a busboy at a restaurant when she says Kevin Spacey gave her son several drinks and touched him inappropriately. Now that teen has not been publicly identified, but the mother says a police report has been filed and there's a criminal investigation underway. Survivors of sexual harassment, assault and abuse took part in a hashtag Me Too March and rally on Sunday in Hollywood, California. Hundreds of people marched up Hollywood Boulevard carrying signs and chanting. Many of those marching say that they are victims of sexual harassment and abuse and speakers at the rally urged women to speak up and called on corporations to do the right thing regarding sexual harassment and equal pay. The Charles M. Schultz Museum reopened on Sunday in California. This after wildfires forced it to shut down. The museum that exhibits the works of the man behind the Peanuts cartoon had Snoopy and Charlie Brown on hand to join in the celebration. The museum held a grand reopening with professional photographers on hand who took photos of fans to replace those lost in the wildfires. One police department in Colorado getting ready to retire its old police dog to make room for a new breed of drug dogs that will not sniff out marijuana this go round. Officer Gary Duncan and his partner Tulo from the Rifle Police Department have spent 10 years fighting crime together. However, because of recreational marijuana being now legal in Colorado, they need new drug sniffing dogs. The department now has two new 12 week old puppies that will go through pretty intense training. We're just not going to train them on marijuana. They won't know the odor. We look for high strung, high energy dogs. They're going to be great. That's exactly the behaviors we'd be looking for. And don't worry about Tulo. He is not the top dog for drug enforcement anymore, but he's still going to help the new pups with this transition. It's expected to take about a year to get those dogs up to speed. Turning to good health now, combining two heart healthy diets can significantly lower blood pressure in adults with hypertension. Researchers assessed the effects of a, law of a low sodium diet along with the DASH diet, which is rich in vegetables, whole grains, fish and poultry. Both diets reduce high blood pressure, but the combination of those diets was especially effective. Well, we know that the winter months are coming. We've had a cold snap already, and one Detroit organization is hoping to bring awareness to the homelessness problem. It's called Enjoy Detroit, and this nonprofit is taking part in the 48-hour homeless challenge, staking out downtown Detroit to bring awareness to those in need. The group is asking for donations of coats, gloves, and food. So, Brandon, we already had our taste of the teens and 20s. How are we looking for this week? Yeah, they're lucky it is not. <clears throat> this time last week when we had some single digit wind chills, teens wind chills, the clouds are kind of saving us from dropping out, bottoming out too much farther than where we're at now. Your sunrise time on this Monday is 722 AM and sunsets tonight at 513 PM. Here's a look at your right now numbers up in our north zone areas along and north of M59, 33 at Oxford, 33 in Emmett. It is is 30 
33 in Sandusky and Marlette, 33 in Holly, Brighton, Linden, all right there. It's a little bit warmer here when you get into the metro zone, even uh, parts of the west zone like Ann Arbor at 34, Manchester 34, 37 in Monroe right now. We'll see middle 30s through the 8 o'clock hour. Also, these low clouds trying to squeeze out a little bit of mit, uh, mist and drizzle, but all it really does is make the roads continue to be uh, slippery, even though that sentence didn't really make sense. You know, you're with me here. Cloudy skies through the lunch hour, 40 degrees and drying out through the morning and afternoon. However, shaking the clouds is going to be a tall task today, staying mostly cloudy most of the day, 42 degrees. The last 12 hour run of our radar and satellite here, and you can see the most of us saw throughout the afternoon and evening rain showers around Metro Detroit on Sunday, but there was a little bit of snow in our north zone. Nothing really sticking around. Send us pictures on storm pins. We'd love to see your snow pictures or anything you have. High pressure settling in today, area of low pressure moving away with the wet weather. But sometimes when high pressure, usually a good weather maker, comes into cloudy skies, it keeps those clouds trapped at the surface. And we could have that all the way through tomorrow morning. But I do expect afternoon sunshine Tuesday, 48 degrees. Get ready for wet weather Wednesday, late morning through the early afternoon, midday. Some rain showers coming in here. Middle 40s is what we expect, but we'll get a nice day on Thursday with sun and clouds 47. A little wintry mix Friday morning, and that changes to some light rain perhaps during the day, but cool enough over the weekend to see some spotty snow showers both Saturday and Sunday. It's time for the Beard Brella giveaway. It is the Beard of the Day giveaway for No Shave November. We want to see your pictures. Your scraggly beard, your playoff beard, your whatever it is beard getting ready for the winter. Share with us on the local for Facebook page and local for storm pins. I want to get a storm pins winner on here, so send us those pictures. We'll reveal that later in the show this morning. A $100 uh, vortex vent shed rain umbrella. This thing is amazing. It will survive a nuclear war. Whoa. Well, I made that up, but it's pretty <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Brandon, your beard is coming in quite nicely as well. So uh, send in your pictures. We want to see your beard. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. It is unfortunately not a good morning, though, on the roads. It is slick out there. We've got plenty of problems. So let's start with this one over on eastbound I-94. It is closed right now at Allard. You can see that is where traffic is being forced off and backups are starting to build in this area. So if you do want to get around this one, you can exit at Maross. Take that to Kelly. Kelly will take you to 8 Mile and you can get back onto eastbound I-94, hopefully avoiding any backups in this area. Uh, we do also have our Nick Monticelli there to bring us updates on that accident, but unfortunately that's not the only one. Here's another one over on northbound I-75. That's closed at Verner Highway, all due to another accident involving a semi-truck. So if you want to get around this one, you can exit at Clark and then you can use Michigan Avenue instead. Be careful in this area as well. Uh, and then that's not all. We have an accident over on eastbound I-96 just past the Davis in here. The left lane is blocked, so you can still get by here in this area. Expect a little bit of a slowdown. Give yourself a few extra minutes for your morning commute if you travel on eastbound I-96. Guys, I'll keep a close eye on all three of these accidents and bring you an update in my next report. Evrod. All right, that's a lot, Kim. Thank you. We'll be checking in with you. It is 548. And get this, a Colorado girl is suing Attorney General Jeff Sessions for what she claims is an unconstitutional federal prohibition on medical marijuana. But that girl, only 12 years old. Her name is Alexis Bortel, and she uses a strain of cannabis oil called Haley's Hope to prevent seizures. She hopes that the lawsuit will normalize medical marijuana and legalize it nationwide. Time now for some stories that you may have missed over the weekend, uh, starting with this one. This actually happened last night. An NFL referee uh, involved in a scary moment, not to the ground during the game on Sunday. It happened during the Broncos Patriots game in Denver during the third quarter. Denver's Jamal Carter slings Trevor Riley to the ground and whoa, just clips that referee and takes the legs right out from under him. Yeah, that ref's name is Jeff Rice. He fell and then hit his head, it bounced right on the ground. That ref, Rice, stayed down for several moments before he's walked to the cart that was brought out for him. He was smiling and laughing as he was taken off the field. So hopefully 
once he gets all checked out, once he got all checked out last night, hopefully he's going to yeah, be Yeah, okay. but whenever you hit your head like that and you're not able to brace yourself, yeah. there's always concerns of concussions, even, you know, when you're thinking about the players, but that could have happened. So hopefully he will be okay. And now to another fall, this time with country music star Carrie Underwood. She actually had to be hospitalized over the weekend after taking a pretty nasty fall on the steps outside of her home. Yes, this happened right at her house in Nashville on Friday. Underwood suffered a broken wrist, several cuts and bruises, but she is expected to be okay. She just needs some time to heal. Because of her injuries, though, she will not be able to perform at the Country Rising Benefit concert that is scheduled for Sunday night at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. So probably some disappointed fans, but of course, understandably, she needs to recover. Yeah, a lot of falls this morning. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Olympic gymnast Lori Hernandez. You know, she won a gold and silver medal in Rio as part of the 2016 U.S. Women's Gymnastics Team. And she was actually here in Metro Detroit over the weekend. Yeah, the 17 year old visited with members of Troy Gymnastics. Can you imagine all the screams and cheers for her? Hernandez has been holding fundraisers all across the country, benefiting the Alzheimer's Association. She has worked closely with the group after losing her own grandmother last year to Alzheimer's disease. She She's just so cute. I think after just kind of sharing my story of what happened with my grandma last year, a lot of teens and kids my age were also coming out with their stories about how their grandparents or parents had Alzheimer's. And so um, it's happening a lot more often than we think. And also it's just, you know, the word is also spreading a lot more. And I think um, just being able to also spread the word from my position, I'm just hoping that we can create a change soon. So wonderful to use her platform in this yeah. way. The young fans who attended the event got to take pictures with Hernandez and enjoy a private lunch with the Olympic gymnast. No doubt inspiring all those girls to want to go to the Olympics as gymnasts yeah. and gymnasts as well. Really cool. cool. It is 551 and after the break, shoppers at the Mall of America stunned when a stabbing takes place inside. We'll be right back. On the next Live in the D, snacks that will make your kids smarter. Plus, the holiday survival guide to help you get through the season. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Tonight at 10. Good Monday morning. 36 degrees outside your door right now. It is drying up, but streets are still a little bit slippery from Sunday's wet weather and a little mist around through 8 or maybe 9 o'clock in a few spots. But 40 and cloudy at noon and a high of 42, a couple of peaks of blue sky. Kim? All right, guys, roads are bad right now. Eastbound I-94 closed at Allard. You can exit at Maross. Take that to Kelly to 8 Mile to 94. Northbound I-75 also closed right now right at Verner Highway. You can use uh, Michigan Avenue instead. Also an accident on eastbound I-96 just past the Davison blocking your left lane. All right, Kim, thank you. A suspect is now in custody after a stabbing at the Mall of America in Minnesota on Sunday night. Bloomington police say that they arrested a man in the Macy's at the Mall of America. The stabbing occurring in the dressing room of the men's department. Police say that the suspect was attempting to steal another man's belongings. The family members were able to disarm the suspect and officers arrived shortly after to take him into custody. Two adult males were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. A small energy company from Montana won a $300 million contract to help rebuild Puerto Rico's power grid. The company is called Whitefish Energy Holdings, and it didn't even have enough employees to complete the job, so it had to hire several workers from Florida. And it's now billing the Puerto Rican Public Power Company $319 an hour for linemen, which is almost 17 times the average salary that linemen in Puerto Rico normally make. And, and in some cases, workers were making between 60 and 100 bucks an hour. A company spokesperson defended their bill, saying that the hourly rate doesn't take into, a into account their overhead costs. It is 557 on your Monday morning and coming up all new at six o'clock. Local stories for you from Detroit, Highland Township and Canton. And how do you keep customers still coming in your brick and mortar stores? Walmart is using an interesting tactic to drive people in, charging more for its products online. Very interesting. And we're continuing to follow breaking news this morning from St. Clair Shores. Some tragic breaking news this morning. Four people killed in a crash along I-94 and all eastbound lanes are shut down. We're going to have a live report from our Nick Monticelli and traffic updates from Kim DiGiulio coming up in just a little bit. Battle of the Bad. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. 
I-94 is shut down after a deadly rollover that claims several lives. Everyone inside the SUV was killed except a toddler. We're live from this horrible accident. And even more devastating news this morning. An earthquake hits the Iran-Iraq border. Hundreds are dead. Thousands more are injured. And now search and rescue efforts are underway. But we do start this Monday morning with some very tragic news here at home. Thanks for waking up with us. We do want to catch you up to speed. Uh, it may impact your morning commute as you're heading out the doors. Absolutely. The eastbound lanes of I-94 are closed because of this accident investigation. This deadly crash that happened on the wet roads around 1 o'clock this morning. Nick Monticelli has been monitoring the investigation there. But Nick, I know the one thing we do know that there was only one survivor of the several people in this vehicle. There was, Rhonda. So there were a total of five people in this SUV when this accident happened at about 1 o'clock this morning, and two of the bodies are now actually off of the road, so that's why we can give you a little better perspective here. But the SUV is still down here on the right-hand side in the shoulder, so I still don't want to show that because there are still two people inside of that SUV. But we do have some video that we can show you. This accident again happening about 1 o'clock uh, one o'clock this morning in the eastbound lanes of I-94. We're basically right underneath of eight mile, a total of five people inside, two males, two females were killed, and there's a little toddler, a little boy who actually is okay. Now, we were told that he was taken to the hospital. That was so he could be taken uh, or checked out, but the firefighter I just talked to said that when they were here earlier, that he just was walking down the highway when they got, not walking on the highway, but they got him out of the car and he was able to walk on his own. So he was not anywhere nearly as injured as those who passed away, which is certainly a testament to the work that car seats are doing and how they can save lives in a situation like this. How this accident happened, MSP is still working on that, still trying to figure out exactly what happened. They believe that speed and the wet weather may have played a role in all of this, but they're still working on all of that right now. But there is something else to consider here. A woman who I talked to who lives just a couple blocks away says this stretch of road has always been a problem. Every couple of weeks, there's there's sirens going down here, um, and it always seems it's either right before the bridge over here or right here. Um, and I could tell you from experience, people fly down this stretch going 80 miles an hour. Don't think about it. Um, the other issue is that on ramp right there, people don't merge well. So it, this happens all the time. Now, that's not to say that is exactly what happened in this case, but it certainly might be a possibility. So, again, a total of five people in the SUV. Two males were ejected. They're the, they're the ones who were actually in the lanes of I-94. Two females are still in the SUV. They also passed away. And believe it or not, that toddler somehow escaped some major injuries. He was able to walk down the road with firefighters, um, you know, kind of hand in hand, unbelievably in a situation like this. Now, I-94 is closed. The eastbound lane starting at Allard. Kim DiGiulio back in the studio keeping an eye on how to get around this one and how it's going to impact your morning commutes. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick, for that report. Here is an overview look of what where Nick is at right now. So this is eastbound I-94. That is Allard where it is closed right now. That's where traffic is being forced off onto. As you can see, it's getting a little bit busier uh, this morning. So traffic backups are starting to build. So what you need to do to get around this is you can exit at Moross, which is just before Allard. You can take that to Kelly, Kelly to 8 Mile, and that, that will get you right back on to eastbound I-94. We also have other problems out there. Take a look at this problem over on northbound I-75. This is currently closed right now at Verner Highway. We do want to show you some pictures of what this looks like right now. Here's some earlier video taken of this scene. You can see that we've got plenty of vehicles uh, on the scene, emergency vehicles, as well as this semi truck that is a jackknife semi truck, which is causing all sorts of problems here in this area as well. So if you do travel this way, you're going to want to exit at Clark and use Michigan Avenue instead. And then that's not it this morning. Let's take it back to our maps here. We do have another accident over on the east eastbound lanes of I-96 just past the Davis and here the left lane is blocked. We are seeing some delays there as well. So no matter where you're headed this morning, guys, be careful. The roads are slick this morning with all that rain we had yesterday. Guys, over to you. And it's not even snowing yet. Well, know? I was out and about driving yesterday, just, you know, was in a lot of different places right. and um, it was it was rough out there. Just all the water and the, just the day long deluge of rain. Yep, it was pesky. It was gloomy and as we uh, look ahead to the day today, it is going to continue to look gloomy anyway. Cloudy skies right now. These low clouds are producing a little bit of a patchy fog and drizzle, so that is keeping some of the area roadways 
a uh, little bit slippery, not everywhere. So we're slowly drying things out, but still 36 degrees, not freezing. So we don't have the ice issue. Northwest winds are five. The forecast at the bus stop this morning, middle 30s, feeling a little bit cooler than that, even though the winds aren't super strong, could still get a little bit of mist and patchy fog and watch out for that as we're back to work and back to school. Afternoon high temperature, only 42 degrees, still cloudy, overcast to a few peaks of sun. Your sunrise time today is 721 AM. There's yesterday's wet weather again moving out. We're stuck in the clouds, but guys coming up, we'll track a little sun and a little bit of a warm up. Alrighty, Brandon, we'll be checking back in with you. It is 605 and we want to get back to the breaking news that we're following in the Middle East. A massive earthquake at the Iran Iraq border that has now claimed the lives of over 300 people. And this is quite a tragedy there. NBC News has the current death toll at 330 people with over 3000 others injured. And we're hearing these numbers continue to increase throughout this morning after a magnitude 7.3 quake slammed the region on Sunday. The U.S. Geological Survey registered the quake at around 1 p.m. local time with tremors and aftershocks felt hundreds of miles away. Here at home, a man is gunned down outside of a popular Arab American market on Detroit's west side. It happened right around 7 o'clock Sunday night near Michigan Avenue in Lanyo. The 34-year-old man was reportedly shot twice in the chest while sitting in his car in the store's parking lot. The man was rushed to the hospital and is now in critical condition. Anyone with information, if you think you saw anything around that time, you should contact Detroit police. And on Detroit's east side, a fire tears through a home and taking the life of a 14-year-old disabled boy. The fire broke out early Sunday morning on Ryad Street near Kelly and Whittier Roads. Four fire officials are saying that when they arrived, they rescued the boy's 52-year-old mother but could not save her son. Well, I don't know how it was set up in the house, but yeah, yeah she couldn't get to him. So He was handicapped. You know, the school bus used to pick him up in the morning. You know, but you didn't see much of them. The fire investigators say that there was a hot plate in the boy's room, and it's believed that that was probably the source of the fire. In Highland Township now, a wild police chase ends with a suspected drunk driver crashing right into a mobile home with a 76-year-old woman inside. The driver rear-ended a deputy near a liquor store on Milford Road early Saturday and then took off eventually crashing into that mobile home, the one right there on your screen, moving the whole foundation several feet, in fact. The deputy found Yvonne Beach on the floor inside of the mobile home. The woman's knees could not believe her eyes. I watched it slam into my house, and I just took off out of there, ran over here before the police could even get him out of the car, and I told him there was an elderly person inside, like we had to check on her. The driver, a 37 year old man, was arrested and is still in custody at this hour. The 76 year old woman is in the hospital with some bumps and bruises, but it does sound like she'll be OK. Time now is 6.07 and there were costly and controversial comments. The advertisers dropping Fox News host Sean Hannity. But first, if you have a mountain of paper, bills, statements and receipts, Rob Maloney reveals which you should keep and which you can throw away. That's next in his Money Monday report. We'll be right back. Let it. Good Monday morning. Let's talk about your tax records because we're getting toward the end of the year here. How long are you supposed to keep your records? When, and what are you supposed to keep, say, either in the house or in a safe deposit box? Well, let's start with the list. If you have a retirement plan, an IRA, or even a brokerage account, you want to keep all of the statements forever. And there's a reason for that because your broker at some point, or even if you pass away, someone's going to need to know how much you paid for those stocks when you bought them. Now, when it comes to your tax records, people get a little wiggy about this. You can keep your tax returns forever if you want. That's an option. But you only need to keep the supporting tax documentation for three to six years. And here's how it breaks out. The IRS can audit you within three years. After that, they're likely not to audit you. They can challenge you in the next three years. And there's no time limit for fraud. But that's the guide in terms of keeping your tax records. The things you need to get rid of, well, canceled checks and ATM receipts. Unless they're for tax purposes, you don't need those. The bank has the records on that. And once they've cleared, you don't need that stuff anymore. You also don't need those monthly bank statements. So if you have those in there, you can shred those as well because the bank has the copies if you really need them. For more of my money tips, go to the Money Monday page on clickondetroit.com. Right now, it is. 
All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 612 and Sunday was a good day to be a Detroit Lions fan. It's kind of a shaky start. Mm, yeah, it was. But the team ended up <laughs> delivering a big win over the Cleveland Browns. We were like, no, you will not lose to the worst <laughs> team in the league. In true Lions fashion, the team got off to a slow start behind for the first three quarters, but came back with some big plays to knock the Cleveland Browns back down to Ohio. Final <laughs> score, Lions 38, Browns 24. The Lions are still two games behind the Vikings, though. So up next, we have the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field, and then hopefully Hopefully we can pick off Minnesota on Thanksgiving. And as we're now more than halfway through the season, the race for a playoff spot in fantasy football leagues is getting tighter. And to help you secure that spot, let's go to our Monday morning quarterback, Jason Carr. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for all the credit. First off, here's who you should have avoided starting this week. Pretty much anyone on America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. They were completely shut down by the Atlanta Falcons, only managing seven points in their loss. They were, of course, without suspended Ezekiel Elliott, who was also not on Brandon's roster. The, the team looked absolutely lost without him. As every waiver claim becomes ever more crucial to your team's playoff success, you may want to consider Vikings QB Case Keenum. He's having a great season, 11 touchdowns, 1,900 yards passing so far, and the team's win Sunday against the Redskins. He threw four touchdowns. His play could spell big trouble for the Lions division title hopes. And if you had a Saints running back on your team and you started them, good job. They combined for five touchdowns against the Bills as the team rolled to a 47 to 10 win. What happened to this Bills vaunted defense? Flint's Mark Ingram had three of those touchdowns. Believe it or not, Drew Brees didn't have to throw a single touchdown. After the game, the Saints punter won Twitter. Since Thomas Morstead didn't have to punt all game, he trolled the Bills, tweeting, huge team win, went ahead and added myself to today's inactive list. That's how you do it if you're the punter and you don't get any work. Back to you guys. All right, all right. Let's uh, take a look at the current number out there. And Jason was right. I had Ezekiel Elliott. However, the guy I played had a bunch of Cowboys. And as Jason said, mistake, mistake. So I still have a chance if Jarvis Landry gets less than like eight or nine points tonight. So you're telling me one in a million? I've got a chance. Temp out there right now is 36. Northwest wind is five, and that makes the feels like number 32. It feels freezing, essentially, and will through the morning. It's not a real strong wind today, but it is coming out of the northwest. It is a cooler air mass in play. A little bit of drizzle around now. Low clouds just trying to squeeze out what's left. Spotty drizzle drying out by 8 or 9 a.m. Clouds looming through the noon hour, 40 degrees, and overcast skies with a couple of peaks of sun through the afternoon, 42 degrees, a cloudy evening, 37, and the cloud cover will be the big variable overnight tonight into tomorrow. It looks like uh, the Sunday activity, which was mainly rain for most of us, but we did get some snow up into Lapeer, Genesee, even parts of St. Clair, northern Macomb County through the late part of yesterday. That is all racing to the east, and we have high pressure trying to slide in. That high pressure from up above is trapping the low clouds. Normally high pressure is smooth sailing, blue skies, but it's trapping the low clouds today and may do so through the morning hours tomorrow. But I do expect some Tuesday sun and 48 degrees as we have uh, a few of you maybe flirting with 50, we hope. Rain showers coming in on Wednesday. Yes, rain, not snow. Late morning through the early afternoon, midday, mid 40s, not an all day soaker, but right in the middle middle of the day. Thursday, we're back into a little bit of sunshine, 47 degrees and get ready for a wild Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Again, we have a little mix to some midday rain Friday and spotty snow showers on and off Saturday and Sunday. Your 1-800 Hanson's weather window, a beautiful look down at Campus Martius, the tree and the rink and the transition of the seasons. We love it. I love seeing all those lights out there and it's time to start thinking about planning that family or maybe work trip downtown to do a little ice skating at Campus Martius. Yeah, time flies. I feel like it was just at the beach bar down there a couple weeks ago. 
Oh, well, winter is here, everyone, which means that the roads are going to be a little tricky, and that is what we're dealing with today. We had all that rain yesterday. Roads are wet, so here's what we're dealing with. This tragic accident over on eastbound I-94 has 94 closed right at Allard right now, as you can see all these flashing lights. Uh, traffic being forced off onto Allard, but in the meantime, you want to exit before that at Moross. You can take that to Kelly. Kelly will take you to 8 Mile, and you'll get back onto eastbound I-94. We do have our Nick Monticelli here at this scene bringing us updates on this accident, but that's not the only problem we're dealing with this morning. We also have a closure on northbound I-75 closed right now right at Verner. This is involving a semi accident. It's going to take some time to clean this one up. Authorities are on the scene here as well, but in the meantime, if you do travel on northbound I-75 exit at Clark and then you can take that to Michigan Avenue and travel that way instead. And that's not all. We also have this problem on eastbound I-96. An accident just past the Davison. The left lane is blocked. We have red on our map here showing that it is slow in that area. Give yourself some extra time. Now, despite all these problems, though, there are some areas that are looking good this morning. I want to show you that with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. We're looking at I-696 right at mound, and even though the roads are a little bit damp from yesterday's rain, it is good here. Traffic volumes are starting to build and no problems in this area. Everyone. Well, I certainly hope we keep it that way. We can't take another accident this morning. Kim, thank you. It is 618 now. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. We start with Walmart charging more online than its stores and in its stores. We'll uh, let uh, Maribel explain that one. Plus, dealerships have conjured a demon. But first, Fox News host Sean Hannity facing some fallout this morning. Maribel Aber joining us live now at NASDAQ. Let's start there. What's going on with him, Maribel? Hey, good morning, everyone. Lots of news to get to. At least five companies in this story say they'll no longer advertise products on the Fox News show Hannity. This is according to USA Today. The ads were pulled in response to host Sean Hannity's coverage of the sexual misconduct allegations against Alabama Senate Senate candidate Roy Moore. Keurig, uh, Realtor.com, and Nature's Bounty are among the companies that pulled ads from the show. The first Dodge Challenger demons are on their way to dealers. The mega muscle cars are boasting 840 horsepower of Hemi V8 engines, but the model has drawn critics with the automotive news calling for a ban of the vehicles from the streets. The trade publication called the car, quote, inherently dangerous to the common safety of motorists. During testing, the demon covered a quarter mile in 9.6 seconds at speeds of 140 miles per hour. Walmart has raised prices on some online items in an effort to drive more people into its stores and then boost profits. The Wall Street Journal reports here the retailer has up the price of some food and household items sold on its website. In one example, a twin pack of Betty Crocker Hamburger Helper was listed at $3.30 online, but then 80 cents cheaper in the store. Other items such as Kraft Macaroni and Cheese and Purina Dog Food were also higher online. A Walmart spokesperson said customers can still get the cheaper prices online when they choose to pick up the items in the store. But Everett, it's interesting because really everyone wants things delivered and they want it delivered fast and cheaper. Yeah, I don't know if this is really going to be a win for Walmart, especially with big competitors like Target and, and uh, other ones. So Maribel, thank you for that. And Amazon. Yeah, exactly. You can get a lot of stuff for, <laughs> yeah. for cheaper. 620 is your time. A college party takes a scary turn still ahead the moment a floor collapses, sending all the party goers crashing below. But first, panic inside of a busy airport when a passenger's bag starts smoking. We've got new video that shows the quick actions from TSA agents. And before we go to break, it's time to meet today's Facebook friend for the day. We randomly pick this winner every single morning, and this entry is from all the way back in May. Oh, May, doesn't that sound like a good time? Yeah. I hope you're watching. If you remember sending this in, I hope you're watching Michael Shepard from Southfield. And Rhonda, he says he simply loves you. He simply says, Rhonda Walker rocks. Aww. Doesn't she? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And congratulations. We're going to be sending you a $25 gift card to National Coney Island just for being our friend of the day and being so patient waiting all these months to get your picture on the air. To all the rest of our friends out there, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page, click on the front of the day tab, and then watch us every morning. You may see your picture and win yourself something for free. We're back in a moment. 
Welcome back, everybody. An intense new video captures the panicked moments following a small explosion inside of the Orlando International Airport. So take a look at the pictures. The video captures a lithium battery exploding inside of one passenger's bag just outside of a security checkpoint. It happened on Friday. The explosion caused chaos inside of the airport, as you can imagine, uh, that lasted for hours and created lots of delays. You can also see the actions of the TSA agent who quickly grabbed the bag. He says he he moved the bag in between two pullers to minimize the damage in case the entire bag exploded. All right, weather and traffic together. We have 36 degrees under cloudy skies. Most of the area is drying out, but with a little bit of patchy drizzle or mist in a few spots. So just a warning that some of your streets and freeways may be a little bit slippery still. Clouds are going to hang on most of the day, and so not a lot of movement on the thermometer. 40 at noon, 42 this afternoon's high, Kim. All right, well, eastbound I-94 still closed at Allard. You can exit at Maross and take that to Kelly to avoid this. Also, another closure on northbound I-75. That's closed right at Verner Highway. You want to use Michigan Avenue instead this morning. And then an accident causing slowdowns on eastbound I-96 just past the Davison. Your left lane is blocked. All right, Kim, thanks very much. And if you are feeling cold this morning, you might, might want to blame the Detroit Pistons because yesterday afternoon they beat the heat. Sent them packing. Well, let's take you to Little Caesars Arena. And the Pistons came back from an 11 point deficit in the third to snag the win from the Miami Heat, rounding off a five game homestand with five wins final score Pistons 112 the heat can't stand the heat that's from Seinfeld 112 103 they're in uh, second place in the Eastern Conference unfortunately the Boston Celtics are equally as hot Pistons are now off until Wednesday when they head to Milwaukee to take on the Bucks. Go Pistons. Yeah, absolutely. And it's 626, everybody. And coming up next at 630, local stories for you from Farmington Hills, Plymouth, and Ann Arbor. Plus, she's a world-class athlete with six Olympic medals. And now gymnast Allie Raisman is ending her silence about sexual abuse at the hands of Dr. Larry Nassar. And we continue to follow breaking news this morning. A rollover crash has left four people dead and one toddler survived this crash. I-94 shut down for hours. Our Nick Monticelli is there live on the scene when we come back. The Yikes. Today's hot video actually comes from Denton, Texas. It was fun for a while, but the shocking video is of what what could have been a tragic end to this college party when the floor gave way, dropping some students into the room below. Pretty scary stuff there. It was reportedly a homecoming celebration at the University of North Texas, and witnesses say those at the party actually had been jumping up and down to that trap music when the floor crumbled. Luckily, there were only minor injuries. Wow. Pretty scary stuff. We're back in a minute. We're on a mission. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Some tragic breaking news this morning. Four people dead after an overnight crash. The only survivor is a toddler, a little boy. This tragic breaking news we're following for you this morning along I-94. And right now, the eastbound lanes at I-94 are still closed near 8 Mile, and they have been closed for hours. Yeah, they certainly have been. This crash happened around 1 o'clock this morning. We are learning more about the victims, though. Nick Monticelli has been there along I-94 gathering more invest information from investigators. Nick, what have you learned? So, Rhonda, we know that of the four who have passed away, two are males and two are females. And the little boy, obviously, as you heard, a toddler is okay. He was able to walk away from this crash with the help of firefighters. They are still working on trying to get the last victim out of the SUV involved in this crash. So we still are not gonna pan down and show you any live pictures, but we do have some video that we can show you. Again, this accident happening in the eastbound lanes of I-94, basically right underneath Eight Mile Road here on the border of Harper Woods and St. Clair Shores. The best that witnesses in MSP can tell is that this was a single car accident likely losing control 
hitting a wall, maybe even rolling over. The two people that were ejected from the vehicle are both males, presumably not wearing their seatbelts, and the two females were still inside the SUV. One was able to be removed about 20 minutes ago by a firefighter, and they are still trying to get that other victim out of there right now. Again, they did have a toddler that was involved in this crash, but it's a testament to car seats in this case because four people died, but the toddler was able to walk away with the help of firefighters and witnesses who were here watching the entire thing said that was a breath of fresh air considering what's going on. One of the police officers mentioned it to us. Um, originally, somebody heard it on the radio that had said he had survived. So that was everybody's big concern. Did he make it? Didn't he make it? You know, at least one sort of positive out of the tragedy. And I guess that's really the only way you could look at this when four people die instantly like this. At least there is some kind of positive that the toddler was able to survive this accident. Now, the same witness was telling us that this stretch of I-94 here is problematic because of the curves here, especially with the temperature dropping and the roads are getting wet and sometimes freezing in situations that they have accidents here all the time. And this will be con a concern as we head into the winter months. That could be even the cause of this accident, but the MSP investigators are still down there working, piecing things together, taking a lot of photographs, trying to get all the evidence they can to bring in the reconstruction team and piece together exactly how this accident happened. But again, five people in this SUV. It's a Dodge SUV. I can't tell if it's maybe a Durango or a Nitro, but five people inside, four passed away, and a toddler was able to survive. We're live here on 8 Mile, basically the border of Harper Woods and St. Clair Shores. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News Today. And Nick, I guess a lot of people are wondering, this toddler survived? Does this toddler have any living family members? You said two males, two females. Do we know the ages? Is it the child's parents? We don't know that. Uh, the firefighter from St. Clair Shores that I was talking to said they have not been able to do anything as far as identification of those who passed away. He said they had no photo ID, nothing on them. So mm. they're working on all of that. Hopefully the toddler can tell them something, but he's only two years old, so that's not really going to help too much around the age of two years old. Uh, but again, no ID. Uh, we can't even find a license plate on this vehicle, so it's going to be very difficult for investigators to try to figure out who's involved. Wow. Oh, this is so tragic. Very, very sad. All right, Nick, thank you. And at 634, of course, uh, we do need to get around all this as investigators still continue to work. Let's turn things over to Kim DiGiulio, uh, tracking this accident and several others as well. That's right, guys. An absolutely tragic story here on eastbound I-94. You're looking at the closure right now. Traffic being forced off onto Allard. So traffic is uh, getting busier in this area as we approach that 7 o'clock hour. So what you need to do to get around this is you can exit at Maross. Maross will take you to Kelly and then Kelly will take you to 8 Mile. You can easily get back onto eastbound I-94. That'll help you avoid any of the backups. We also want to let you know about another closure this morning. Trouble on northbound I-75 closed at Burner Highway. We do have some earlier footage of what this scene looks at. This is, uh, as you can see here, quite the mess. It is a jackknife semi, and that is going to be closed for quite some time as uh, crews are on the scene working to clean this up. So in the meantime, if you do travel over on northbound I-75, instead this morning you're going to want to exit at Clark and then use Michigan Avenue instead. Now let's take a look at our maps to show you another problem we have over on westbound I-94 in the downtown area just past the lodge here. We've got an accident blocking your left lane. So this is a good indication to show you how many uh, how bad the roads are this morning because of those slick roads. So no matter where you're headed this morning, just be careful and take it easy out there. Now Brandon has a look at the forecast. Is it still going to rain today at all? Uh, you know, we're looking at spotty drizzle mist fog kind of stuff, so it is not wet everywhere, but a lot of folks are still seeing the residual low clouds just dripping a little bit. 36 degrees at Metro Airport in our Metro zone. This bottom line represents visibility as we watch out for fog, but three to five mile visibility is actually pretty decent. Ann Arbor at 34. It's 33 in Pontiac, 34 in Adrian. Clouds are going to linger here. They fog and mist by eight, nine o'clock starting to move on everything moving east except the clouds just stuck here 40 degrees at noon and only 42 for a high temperature. If we're able to strip the cloud cover, we'd certainly be able to warm up, but that is not necessarily the case today and maybe even overnight into early tomorrow. But Everod and Rhonda, I do have some sunshine coming your way a few times in the seven day and it will have a nice impact on temps coming up.
Well, all right, we'll take that. We certainly will. Let's get you some stories that are making headlines across the Metro Detroit area for you this morning. We're going to take a look at Plymouth, Canton, Farmington Hills, and Ann Arbor. But we do want to start in Pittsfield Township this morning because that's where charges could be handed down today, in fact, after the deadly shooting of a woman in the parking lot of an apartment complex. Investigators are saying that they received a call of shots fired at the complex on Sparrowwood Drive, just east of US 23, just after 1130 Saturday night. And once they got there, they discovered a 27 year old woman was allegedly shot by her girlfriend. Police say the girlfriend was the one who called to report the shooting and she is in custody this morning. We do expect to learn more about the case once charges are filed. Meanwhile, families in two different Wayne County communities are still searching for these two missing teenagers, 16 year olds. As all their ages, they look so young. Lillian Wynn and Timothy Weber are believed to be traveling together. Wynn was last seen at her home in Canton, while Timothy was last seen at his home in Plymouth. It's believed that the pair may have used an ATM, possibly in Rossford, Ohio, which is outside of Toledo around 11 o'clock last night. Police say that they may be traveling in a gray 2017 Jeep Wrangler. Of course, their families would appreciate any tips that could lead to finding them. And over to Farmington Hills now, where an investigation continues after two people are hospitalized when a fire tore right through their home. That fire started just after 930. This was Sunday morning on Quaker Valley Lane near Farmington Road and I-696. Both victims are being treated for smoke inhalation. Thankfully, though, they're expected to be okay. Investigators say the distance between the home and the fire hydrant hurt their efforts. And finally, over in Ann Arbor, we know the University of Michigan and Ohio State football game is still a couple weeks away. But on Sunday, hundreds flock to the big house to attempt to be hero uh, a few weeks early. This is the Wolverines and Buckeyes competing to collect the most blood donations and bone marrow registrations ahead of the big game, something the two teams do annually, the two universities, I should say. The event is the largest single day blood donation on campus. The winner will be announced at halftime on November 25th. Last year, Michigan won the blood drive. As for football, the Buckeyes have won the last five straight. Hopefully the Wolverines can snap that in the big house in yeah. a couple of weeks. It would make a lot of Spartan fans happy because they Certainly beat was. us good yesterday. <laughs> I'm surprised you're Saturday. even talking about it. I'm talking about it. I have to let it out Yeah. because it was very it was single upsetting. Single digits for the Spartans, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they had like 45 mm. or 48 or something. It just, it was awful. Wow. It was a disaster. At least the Lions won though, right? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> 639, we can beat one Ohio team. 639 is the time now. Another Olympian has come forward in more yes, serious news this more morning. more serious news indeed. Let's get over to Jason, who was following that story for us this morning. Coming up, gold medalist Allie Raisman details her alleged encounter with disgraced USA gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser, plus why she's now breaking her silence. And the fallout continues for actor Kevin Spacey, why he's now at the center of a criminal investigation. That's coming up next. And high school football playoffs are coming to an end. So who survived under the Friday Night Lights? For scores and highlights from our Four Frenzy Game of the Week, you can head to the Four Frenzy page of clickondetroit.com. We're back in a minute. Four Frenzy. Welcome back, everybody. It is 642 and down in Sutherland Springs, Texas, people gathered for service at First Baptist Church just one week after Devin Patrick Kelly opened fire, killing 25 people and an unborn child. The service, however, was not held at the church. It was held in a tent just a few blocks from the church building, which has now been transformed into a memorial. You can see here the inside of the church has been painted white and there are 26 empty chairs, each with a single red rose on it, showing where each of the victims were found. Worshippers who were moved by the tragedy say that they'll focus now on their faith. There's a greater God that we serve. Uh, we lean on him. We don't lean on our own understanding as the Bible teaches us um, that something good will come out of this. Certainly gives you chills just looking at the inside of that building. Patrick, Pastor Frank Pomeroy originally wanted to tear down the building, but now he says the church members will decide what they're going to do with it in the coming weeks. President Trump met with controversial Philippine President Rodrigo Duarte on that's happening today. The two leaders spoke briefly with reporters at the start of their meeting. He did not respond to shouted questions about whether he'd raise the issue of human rights abuses in the Philippines. Duarte has come under fierce criticism from human rights groups for overseeing a violent drug war that has killed thousands of people. Nevertheless, President Trump had warm words of praise for the Philippine leader. 
And actor Kevin Spacey is now under a criminal investigation after being accused of sexually assaulting a former news anchor's teenage son. Spacey allegedly gave the boy several alcoholic drinks and touched him inappropriately inside of a restaurant while the teen was working. The teen's identity has not been made public, but he has filed a police report. And survivors of sexual harassment and assault took part in a hashtag MeToo march in Hollywood, California over the weekend. Hundreds marched down Hollywood Boulevard carrying signs and chanting. Many of those marching say that they are victims of sexual assault and harassment. Women were urged to speak up and they called on corporations to do the right thing regarding sexual harassment and equal pay. It is 645 on your Monday morning and all weekend long, I sat on the couch with a blanket and the fire going. Yes, I had the fire going as well. Man. It was wonderful to have the fire going, Brandon, mm -hmm. um, just to stay toasty warm inside. But if you had to go outside, it was kind of brutal. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about how to respond to that. You're, you're welcome. Eh. Wasn't, uh, you know, a Veterans Day wasn't, it could have been a little warmer, but at least we had some sunshine coming and going. Yesterday, that rain lingered and then changed over to some snow in parts of our north zone. But this morning, middle 30s for most of us haven't moved in the last couple of hours. 36 at Metro, 34 in Howell, 34 in Lapeer, 37 in Monroe as we uh, saw that live picture there it is of the rink and the tree and the lights downtown campus marshes all festive already temperatures in the middle 30s through the morning hours with low clouds still trying to drop a little mist some patchy fog and drizzle but it is not a big widespread problem enough to make some of our streets a little slippery and keep our temperatures from moving a whole lot 40 degrees at noon 42 your afternoon high from cloudy skies to a few peaks of sun coming late in the day. Don't expect a ton of sun today. We'll get more tomorrow. This was Sunday evening and then everything by midnight shifting out. High pressure, normally a stable weather maker is moving in, but that high pressure from the upper atmosphere pushing down keeps the low clouds stuck here at the surface and we're just trying to squeeze out a little bit of mist from them early on. But again, improvements in store for tomorrow, especially you can notice today it's a struggle even through the afternoon, only a few holes in that cloud deck. But as we get in through uh, your Tuesday afternoon, a good deal of sunshine. Although we need to get ready for some wet weather coming your way on Wednesday, probably late morning into the early afternoon, midday. Tomorrow with the sun, upper 40s, maybe a few of you near 50, a few degrees cooler with rain showers midday on Wednesday. A similar pattern Thursday as we warm up just a little bit with sun, but drop back down with showers around. These could be a little bit more of a wintry mix on Friday, coming a little earlier in the morning when temps are a little bit colder. But again, should be mainly rain on Friday. The weekend, we'll have to keep a close eye on Kim because we're tracking scattered snow both days. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Well, not going to lie. This morning has not been a fun one to be the traffic reporter. We're following this tragic accident right now over on eastbound I-94 where four people have died. We're looking at the scene right now. It is closed at Allard as they conduct an accident investigation. You can see that traffic's being forced off onto Allard. So in the meantime, you're going to want to avoid these backups. You can exit at Moross. Take that to Kelly. Kelly will take you to 8 Mile and then 8 Mile will get you right back on eastbound I-94 before you can get where you need to be on time. And unfortunately, that's not the only closure we have right now. Take a look at this one. Northbound I-75 closed right at Verner Highway. I want to give you a closer look at what it looks like right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. As you can see, there's a semi truck involved in this accident. Crews are in the scene working to get this cleaned up, but it has been closed for hours now. Uh, again, so this is going to take some time. We'll continue to keep you updated on this. What we know right now is backups are all the way to Springwells. So in the meantime, if you do travel this way, you're going to want to exit at Clark. Take Clark to Michigan Avenue instead this morning. If you do are caught in these backups, you'll be forced off onto I-96. Now let's take a look at our maps right now with another accident over on westbound I-94. This one just past the lodge here. The left lane is blocked very slow on I-94 as you can see there. So no matter where you're headed this morning, be careful. Roads are slicked and expect some delays. We got plenty of problems out there. Guys.
Yeah, yeah we do. We do. Let's get our hands full this morning. It's 649, everybody. We're talking about this two-time Olympian who is the winner of six Olympic medals, with three of them being gold. Yeah, Jason Carr joins us now. While America cheered her on, Jason, no one knew about this nightmare she was hiding. Yeah, unfortunately, now she's breaking her silence on 60 Minutes. Olympian Allie Raisman spoke for the first time about the sexual abuse she endured at the hands of Team USA doctor Larry Nasser. You don't want to let yourself believe, that, you know, I am, I am, I am a victim of, of sexual abuse. Like, it's really not an easy thing to let yourself believe that. Allie Raisman, captain of the 2012 and 2016 Olympic gold medal winning teams, says she was 15 when she was first treated by Dr. Larry Nasser, who spent more than two decades treating athletes at USA Gymnastics. I was just really innocent. I didn't really know. You know, you don't think that of someone, you know, so I just, I trusted him. Nasser is in jail awaiting sentencing for possession of child pornography. He is also awaiting trial on separate criminal sexual conduct charges and has been sued by more than 130 women alleging sexual abuse. Raisman says a lot of people ask why Nasser's accusers didn't speak up sooner. Why are we looking at why didn't the girl speak up? Why not look at what about the culture? What did USA Gymnastics do and Larry Nasser do to manipulate these girls so much that they are so afraid to speak up? Experts say children don't speak up because their abuser typically employs a technique designed to build an emotional bond. It's called grooming. He would always bring me, you know, desserts or gifts. He would buy me little things. So I really thought he was a nice person. I really thought he was looking out for me. Raisman says she wanted to go public for the thousands of child athletes who are chasing dreams and who are so vulnerable. I want people to know just because someone is nice to you and just because everyone is saying they're the best person, it does not make it okay for them to ever make you uncomfortable, ever. Now, in an effort to stop such abuse from happening, USA Gymnastics says it has adopted a series of reforms that will better protect young athletes going forward. And coming up on the Today Show, Raisman will sit down for a live interview. She'll talk about the sex abuse claims as well as her new book. Good for her. Boy, is that powerful. And we know you showed in your piece, Kayla Maroney, who was on the 2012 right. team, also came out on Twitter not that long ago saying the same thing happened to her. It's sort of unbelievable that, that we can have this dichotomy in our society where Nasser's behind bars, but now we have a, a Senate candidate down south who they say might actually win and survive this. So it's right. it's amazing that you can have this both going on at the same time. Let us know what you think on social media. Sound off. Yeah. All right, Jason, thank you. It is 651, and we'll be right back with today's stories to watch for. Keep it here. Skype. Oh, welcome back, everybody. Our breaking news we're following from overseas. The death toll continuing to rise after a magnitude 7.3 monster earthquake slams the Iran-Iraq border. Right now, NBC News is confirming at least 332 people are dead and nearly 4,000 more injured. And breaking news here at home, Michigan State Police investigating a deadly crash on eastbound I-94 near 8 Mile Road. And sadly, right now we've learned that four people involved in that crash have died. A toddler believed to be around two years old is the only survivor. Kim DiGiulio tracking this accident to help you get around it this morning, as well as a couple others. That's right. Here's a look at this accident from above. This is eastbound I-94 at Allard. Traffic is being forced off there, but to avoid these backups, what you can do is exit at Moross, take Moross to Kelly to 8 Mile. That'll get you back on to eastbound I-94. We also have this over on northbound I-75 closed at Burner Highway. Traffic being forced off onto I-96. So in the meantime, you can exit early at Clark and then use Michigan Avenue instead this morning. Now I want to show you an accident with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is westbound I-94 just before I-96. You can see we've got an accident there on the tow truck, so that's the good news. Left lane is blocked, though. Expect some delays. Brandon. All right, Kim, it is middle 30s, feeling like lower 30s, and low clouds producing a little bit of mist out there, perhaps keeping the uh, streets a little bit slippery. 42, that's it. We're going to be cloudy most of the day today. Uh, maybe a couple of peaks of afternoon sun. And finally this morning, it's time to reveal today, today's Beard of the Day winner. And Yay, the winner who gets this beautiful umbrella. Who is it, Brandon? 
This is our first Storm Pins winner. It is Andrew Efford from Monroe, and he said he started the beard in October for hunting, but more importantly for the Houston Verlanders run. <laughs> he's a huge uh, Houston fan, grew up in the Houston area, so he's an Astros fan. That was his playoff beard, and he says he Works. loves the morning crew here on Aww. Local 4. And well, he says that they you. watch daily. Congratulations. Nice little salt and pepper look there. You're blocking my light, Brandon. <laughs> there this is. is a nice umbrella. <laughs> this it's is a hundred dollar yeah. umbrella you're getting from Shed Raid. So congrats. congrats. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody.